So, so what we have seen so far is the naive base algorithm and some pitfalls that we can avoid in the naive base algorithm. Um, if you remember for the nearest neighbor algorithm and the decision tree algorithm that we saw earlier, which were both discriminative models by the way, um, we did after putting down the algorithm and arguing its pros and cons, we did look at something called the decision function, right? So, how does the decision boundary look like? Right. So, if you, if you remember as for k nearest neighbors as k increased when k was small there were lots of holes and then as k increased kind of smoothened out. Similarly, for decision tree you are doing you know you are cutting the uh, feature space using lines parallel to the axis um, which corresponded to the questions that we were asking in the decision tree and so on. So, now one should also ask the same question here what is the decision function that naive base gives us right. So, in terms of the features can we somehow of course, we know how this decision is uh, got using a base rule and all that, but can we argue something about the decision function itself, right? So, it's a, it's an interesting thing to uh, think about. So, so let us let us talk about this next. So, what we are discussing now is the decision function of the naive base. Well, what is the decision function? We know what is the decision function is. Um, the decision function is as follows, right? So, given a new given x test, we say y test equals 1 if, well, probability of y test equals 1 given x test is greater than the probability of y test equals 0. In other words, divided by the probability of y test equals 0 given x test is greater than or equal to 1. Both are equivalent ways to think about this, right. So, whichever is greater, we will predict that um, as the label, whichever probability is greater. Um, now, this means the following. This just means that if I take the logarithm, then it says the log of probability of y test equals 1 given x test divided by the probability of y test equal 0 given x test is greater than or equal to 0. That is another way to think about the same thing because I mean I can take the log because somehow I am doing this logarithm business because I want to convert products to sums and sums are easier to understand usually. Okay, So, now let us uh, flesh out the details. Um, now, the log of what is probability of y test equals 1? Well, that is probability of x test given y test by the base rule uh, y test equals 1 into probability of y test equals 1 divided by probability of x test divided by probability of x test given y test equals 0 into probability of y test equals 0 divided by probability of x test. Now, this we are saying should be greater than or equal to 0 if we are predicting 1, right. So, predict 1 if this holds. Now, of course, these guys cancel out. They are the same thing because probability of x test is the same. Um, does not depend on the label and we are only trying to say which is the better label. So, we only have to look at the probability of this product divided by this product, right. So, now the logs can be written, um, okay. So, let even before that, let me actually write this down, right. So, what is this probability? So, this is log of, um, now remember we are thinking of x test as usual as f1, f2, dot, 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 ft. These are the features, right. So, each of this is binary, that is that's implied. The, the, prob, the product of i equals 1 to d, um, this is p hat, our estimate p hat 1 um, i power f i into 1 minus p hat 1 i power 1 minus f i into p hat divided by, um, well it is the same product. So, I can write this product as a common thing also, right. So, i equals 1 to d um, p hat 0 i 
power f phi into 1 minus p hat 0 i power 1 minus f phi into 1 minus p hat. It, it, it looks like a complicated equation, but then it is it is a simple thing of doing using Bayes rule and taking logarithms right. So, it is nothing major. Um, so, why am I doing this this way? Well, now what I am going to do is I am so there are these f i's which multiply both of this and 1 minus f i which multiplies both of this. So, which means I can write this equivalently as log of product of i equals 1 to d p hat 1 i by p hat 0 i power f i into 1 minus p hat 1 i by 1 minus p hat 0 i power 1 minus f i into p hat by 1 minus p hat. This guy has to be greater than or equal to 0 if you are predicting 1. Now, it is a product of a bunch of terms. I mean, it has always been. Now, it is easier to because we have bunched up nice things together. So, I can use the logarithm uh, summation. So, now I can say this is sum over i equals 1 to d. Well, if I bring in the log inside, you will see that this is f phi times log of um, maybe I will write it the other way. I will use the different color for I will use a different color for f phi into log of um, p hat 1 i by p hat 0 i plus 1 minus f phi log of I am just doing algebra here, but then it is it is useful to do this because something interesting will come out uh, plus um, log of again use a red color here p hat by 1 minus p hat right. So, <coughs> well um, this is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, what is this? So, now what does this mean? This means that um, I can now write the whole thing again as this 1 minus f i. So, I will bunch together f i terms. So, this is i equals 1 to d um, f i into now what is going to happen is you have a log of p hat by 1 by uh, 1 i by p hat 0 i. Here you have a log of 1 minus p hat 1 i by 1 minus p hat 0 i, but then there is a minus f i. If I bunch together the f i terms, so this is going to look like a log of p hat 1 i into the, the inverse of this right. So, into p hat 0 i um, divided by p hat 0 i into 1 minus p hat 1 i plus well this 1 multiplies this. So, that is a term that will come out plus um, let me use the blue here no we not the blue log of uh, what you would get here is um, basically the these two logs can multiply this is p hat 1 i into p hat by 1 minus p hat 0 i into 1 minus p hat right um, is greater than or equal to 0 or rather I would uh, Uh, let me not do this. Does not really matter. I think I can hold on to this plus log of p hat by 1 minus p hat. Both are okay. Okay. So, so the reason why I am doing this is as follows, right. So, now what are we saying? We are saying the following, right. So, we are given a x test and we want to predict what the y test is. And if you do the calculations, then we are saying you will predict y test is 1 if this quantity is greater than or equal to 0. In fact, if it is strictly greater than 0, you will predict it. If it is if it is equal to 0, then you can predict either y test is 1 or 0. Let us say we predict y test is 1 by tie breaking. Our tie breaking is always on the spam side, let us say. 
Now, what is the benefit of writing it like this? What have we gained uh, by, by doing by writing it like this? Well, what we have gained is the following. We are saying that our x test is a is of the following form, right? So, f1 dot 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 fd and now we are saying we are using those features and then multiplying it by some constant which depends on our parameters and then adding these things up and now we are adding some other constant to it which does not depend on our features and then if this whole quantity is greater than or equal to 0, then we are predicting 1 otherwise we are predicting 0 which means we can then conclude that the decision function which is what we wanted to find out is of the is of a nice form is of the form interestingly it is of the form predict y test equals 1 if here is the interesting thing right so w transpose x test plus some b is greater than or equal to 0, where what is w i? Well, w is a d dimensional vector, where w i happens to be just log of p hat 1 i into 1 minus p hat 0 i by p hat 0 i into 1 minus p hat 1 i, which is this term here, right. So, you, this happens to be our w i. Right. So, and what is b? Well, b is just this term. b is just the remaining piece which does not depend on our features. Right. So, that is going to give us our bias. Right. So, log of 1 minus p hat um, 1 i uh, by 1 minus p hat 0 i, you sum it, sum it up over all i plus log of p hat my 1 minus p hat. Interestingly, whatever naive ways algorithm is essentially doing can now be interpreted as if the decision function is a linear function of our inputs. Our inputs remember is a d-dimensional feature. All we are saying is well there is some w equivalently which depends on our parameters that we are estimating of course, but then it depends in a complicated way on our parameters that we are estimating all right. But still you can think of it as some w such that you know what is the saying? This is saying that well there is some w like this, right? So and that w's components correspond to these parameters that we have estimated somehow. And now you have some uh, some bias term as well, right? So this is w transpose x equals 0. Now you have a bias term which might push it on this side or the other side does not matter w transpose x plus b is equal to 0. Now everybody on one side of this bias, bias term right. So this region is going to be every <coughs> um, you know uh, if, if our x, x test falls on this region then we are going to predict it as spam otherwise we are going to predict it as not spam. The main point is and the most interesting point is that the decision function is, is, is linear and that is the conclusion right. So, the conclusion of this algebraic uh, exercise that we did is that the decision function of naive base is linear which is good to know right. So, because we need to understand how what is the eventual prediction going to be. Of course, it depends on the Bayes theorem it says p of y given x and so on, but it is nice to know that this is essentially a linear function of our inputs. Now, of course, the input now in this case happens to be you know binary which is fine, but still it is a linear function of the binary input right. So, end of the day what we are doing in naive base is a linear function right. So, that is that's that is the decision boundary right. So, whichever side of the linear function uh, with the bias term I mean the bias is uh, this b is usually called as a bias not to be confused with the bias of the coin. So, this is just how much away are you from the origin right. So, in terms of uh, w transpose x plus what should be equal to 0 is the line. So, that that value is the bias and that also depends on our parameters that we have estimated fine, but but 
end of the day, it's just a linear function, right? So this is the decision boundary of naive Bayes. Now, um, what we've seen so far, just to summarize, is that we've seen the naive Bayes algorithm for a specific class conditional independence assumption based model. We saw the maximum likelihood estimates for this model. We saw some pitfalls of this where we can fix using Laplace smoothing. And then we said that the decision function is linear. Now, one thing which we have assumed throughout this discussion about this generative model, especially in the naive based context, is that our features are binary. Of course, we justified it by saying that there are several applications where you might have binary features and we gave a standard application of spam classifier and all that. Um, but now we can ask the question, what if we have you know, real features. Can we do something similar to naive base in a sense of a generative model? Uh, can we make a generative modeling assumption and then do something like naive base even when our features are not necessarily binary, right? So the answer to this is also an S and that is what we'll see next. Uh, a, a, a real, you know, generalization of the standard uh, naive base assumption and how that will help us uh, coming up with different models. That is the next uh, topic of this discussion.